Hi, this is Jeanette from Happy Spots and Ink Spots. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use Twinkling H2Os to watercolor your image. Um, I started off by stamping my Whiff of Joy image. This is a new image from the 2012 uh, collection, uh, the Baby Collection. And um, I've stamped it off on this watercolor paper, which is by Fabriano. And I've used stays on ink to stamp it. So I'm going to just um, put my H2Os that I've selected to use. Now these are hard so they have to be reconstituted and how I do that is I take one of these misters and I just sort of spritz them a little bit and that is going to um, reconstitute them. So I'm just going to set them aside a little bit and just wipe down my area. I'm going to be using a water tank brush. Okay, um, These are my preferred um, brushes to use. They're filled with water. I just find them a lot easier to work with. And I'm just going to say that um, I'm by no means an expert in watercoloring. It's just that I've had a lot of requests for a video to show how I do it. So you're going to notice on these water tank brushes there's um, two little sides that say push so you just push down on that to bring the water down through here onto your bristles. And I like to say you want to have um, it a little bit damp but you don't want it soaking wet so I usually run it on my hand and when you feel that little bit of dampness that's what you're looking for. Now when I'm going to be coloring the background of my images that's what I start with. Um, I just find it easier so I don't drag um, any of the brown of this mouse into the background. Um, if the brown is already there that generally tends to happen. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. So this has been sitting for a minute or so with the water on it and you're going to see that it it does create a really nice sort of um, sort of liquidy paste I would say. So I've got some color on my brush. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go along the periphery here of my image and start adding it. And then it's important to have your paper towel to, to wipe out with. And I'm going to start just blending that color away like that. I'll do the same here. I'm going to drag some of that color over this way and do the same thing. Really at this point what you really want is to get rid of that line and just blend it so it sort of fades to nothing. And as you see I just keep wiping that excess color off on my paper towel. Okay. So that area I'm really happy with. I'm going to move on. Um, I like to work in smaller areas just so that um, it doesn't dry up on me. So again, I'm going to be putting the color around the periphery and then wiping off the excess. And then I go ahead and start blending. Just go on working outwards so it just fades off to nothing. If you find your, your bristles um, aren't wet anymore, you just sort of push on the side again. That's going to release some water.
Okay, and I tend to turn my image around just to make it um, easier for me to manipulate. Okay, so I'm going to leave um, the bottom portion here um, uncolored with the blue. And um, I'm probably going to be putting a sort of darker gray or something down there, but I'm, I'm not going to do that right now. So that color, because I know you're going to ask, is called Summer Breeze. And I'll put the link to all these things at the end of this post or end of this video. Okay, so the next color I'm going to be using is called Blushing Caramel. And it's a really pretty color for this little mouse. And again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna go along the sides, sort of filling in that color. And the thing about um, these H2O's is, is they twinkle, they shimmer when they dry. So the coloration is really, really pretty when it's all done. So same thing, I'm just blending it. I'm blending it towards the middle. The middle is where I want to see my highlight. The size is where I want to see my shadow. goal here really is to get rid of any lines. You don't want to see where the color starts or ends. There. And I'll go ahead now and work on the other side. And I hope it's not too distracting to have me keep turning this. Going ahead and adding a little bit more. Okay. So really your goal is to have your color really dark around the sides and you're just blending it inwards and you don't want to see at this point, you don't want to see any lines. If you happen to add too much water, what happens is it sort of dries with a line, but that's okay. You can go in once it's dry and sort of blend out that line again. So now I'm going to work on the body here. So again, I'm just applying this where I want to see my shadows. And I work in, you know, sort of small sections.
just, I did get a little bit of extra color there, so I'm just blending it out. that in the frame for you. Now as I said, um, I don't know if the way I watercolor is typical of um, how others do, so this really is just it's just the way I do it to get results. Um, it may not be uh, correct, but it's it's what works for me. Just went ahead and added a little bit more there to get more shadow. Okay, just this little bit is going to be quite dark, so I'll just fill that all in. And now it's time for the tail. So Okay, so I'm going to give that um, all a chance to dry, and the next color I'm going to be using is a new one. It's called Dream Blooms. It's this really, really, really pretty pink. So that's what I'm going to be using for the ears. out of frame there, sorry. Okay, so I just added it to the edges there and I'm blending out. Okay, and I'll go ahead and do this ear. Alright, and um, just a little tiny bit um, here on the belly, I think is, um, is nice, but as I said, just a tiny bit. Okay, I noticed there's a little bit there of his fur that I missed, so I'm just going to go in, fill that in. Okay, I wanted to put a little bit of pink here. So in your watercoloring, it's great to move around um, once you've um, colored an area and it's still drying, move to another area um, so you don't get any um, sort of leakage or blending of your two colors if you don't want. Going to go ahead now that the face is quite dry. I'm going to go ahead and add 
the cheeks. So for that I'm using Poppy Red. It's really, really a quite intense red. So just really picking up a little bit on the tip of my brush and I tap it in where I want the um, rosy cheeks to go. And you can just go ahead and add a little more. But again, just don't add a great big blob of concentrated color because that becomes really hard to blend out. So that's great on, on that side. Again, I'm going to grab a little bit here and do this side. Just a tad more color. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to let that dry out before I go ahead and um, do anything in this area. But my ears are dry, so I can go ahead and just add some of that poppy red to the ears. And then just blend it up like that. And I'll do the other ear. It's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and just do the uh, diaper. For that I've chosen Winter Mist Grey. I'm going to use just a little bit of that. And that will just go um, where I want to see my shadows. So I'll wipe off my excess really well on my towel and then I'll go ahead and start blending that. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and um, do the pacifier and I will go ahead and just use that same Summer Breeze color for that. So that going. Alrighty. So now I'm just going to go ahead and here I have a little bit of a water line. I'm going to blend that out. So you can see that um, it's totally easy to fix any of your mistakes when you're watercoloring. Just to be a little patient. So I'm going to go ahead and 
do his nose and for that I am using burnt umber. And I'm also going to do um, the little shadow underneath him and the burnt umber. So how I do that is I just sort of draw a line outwards like that. And then with a really quite a wet brush. I've, I've pressed um, the sides of the barrel there and I have quite a lot of water in the bristles. That just makes it really easy to um, create a really nice faded graduated color. And then just you want to make sure that this line here kind of lines up. And you just move that color around. And you're wiping off the excess on your towel. <clears throat> so I'm going to excuse, I know I have a little bit of a froggy um, voice today. Just, um, I have allergies to tree pollen and it's a springtime so they're acting up a little bit. All right so there's the background. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of this burnt umber to the nose now that that initial layer has dried up a little bit. And just tiny bit here on the eyebrows. And again, I'm still not happy. Um, I have still a little bit of a waterline, so I'm just going to fix that up. And that I find happens if, you, if your um, brush is a little too wet. There we go. So that's my image done. Hold it up. And I'm not sure if you can see the twinkle um, on the camera, but in real life it's there and it's really, really cute. So I hope um, this has helped you guys out. Uh, I know I've been asked for a long time to make this tutorial, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.